Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> <laughs> That 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 happened a bit quicker than I'd anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the record button, and it normally gives you a countdown. Oh, no, guys, no, I forgot. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, you need your intelligence, intelligence specs. Yeah. There we oh, go. Yeah. So, oh well, look. In order to be with you and to have solidarity and to make Junaid feel different, there you go. There we go. Who got this on? So it's good night for me. <laughs> so, uh, assalamualaikum and welcome, one and all. You are back here with Junaid Rahim, Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth, <laughs> and Ibrahim Sheikh. Welcome. Fantastic. On our coronavirus update, just to find out what is happening in the world. Uh, it's all people are talking about. Uh, it's having a massive impact on our lives. So, just for our, our normal uh, 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 twenty-four hour update on yon corona virus so what what did you think about betty i thought, oh, I thought it was brilliant i thought it was hilarious <laughs> you both know who i mean then oh yes yeah have you ever wanted to punch somebody in the face quite so much <laughs> <laughs> the cheeky rotten thing <laughs> Stay indoors. I'm trying to say who you're thinking. You're being very provocative. provocative but our lovely listeners who don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> the Queen's speech, sir. Did you see the Queen's speech? Oh no, I was thinking about something else. I do apologise. I am constantly stop, 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 stop. too stop. 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 It's, it's all right, mate. Honestly, we were talking I just about. Let you carry on there. It was fantastic. <laughs> we were talking about the Scottish Health Secretary. No. no. She's not called Beth. Is she, is she calls <laughs> it, like primrose? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I mean, yeah. you know, what, what on earth is she even thinking about? Exactly. Well, so cl clearly, she's not. So, what I mean, is fresh in my clearly, mind when we talk about the, the, the Scottish Health Secretary? Yeah. This is the person who stands up in front of everybody on national television every single day and says, "What? Stay at home. Stay at home." <laughs> I'm going to take, take an opposing view to you, Janae. Go on. Then she she has she has a second home. Yes. And she didn't go inside. She just wants to go and check that the house is all right. What? Twice. Twice. <laughs> Once a week. But there, there, there was there was photographs in the sun of her uh, baby. Uh, what do you call it? Sunbathing outside it. Really? Yes. All right. In that case, she I've been her husband, and then she went with the kids. It's fifty miles away from where she lives in Edinburgh. Yeah. This second home is in Fife, right. and <clears throat> she just basically wanted to get away for the weekend. Ah. And she so, took the kids. With and, her. And, and, and you know, there are a lot of people out there, affluent people with a second home, and the government has specifically said, "Do not go to your second home," because oh, they tend no. to be small areas. Yeah. And if you fall ill, you're going to put a strain on the National Health Service, you're yes. putting a strain on the local amenities, uh, yeah. you're causing an absolute nightmare. Anyway, must be off, I've got some packing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the two weeks running, she, she jumped in a car and went from Edinburgh to Fife to her second home because she wanted to get away from it all. You know, I've been doing, is, what I've been is, doing, what guys. What process do you need to go through? What exactly? I mean, right. number one, well, I'm not in the public eye. Number two, there won't be, you know, people out there trying to bring me down. Oh, what was she thinking? What she, she was, was she? she? Well, no. Well, she yeah. was, but you know what she was thinking? Ah, blow yeah. them. Stuff them, yeah. Stuff them. them. I'll do what I like. The peasants. Yeah. The peasants. <laughs> I'll do whatever I want, so long as, in fact, if you could all stay in, it'll mean there's not as much traffic on the roads when I'm going to Fife. Yeah. Is what so you the roads thinking. will be clear, I'll get there in half the time. Yes, uh, exactly. You know. There won't yeah, be a queue exactly. at Sainsbury's, <laughs> is what she was thinking. <laughs> when I get me suntan lotion, when I get me lotion. <laughs> She's full bitty. Oh, no, I don't think she is. I, I just assumed, when you said a woman's name, I assumed that's who it was, because I was already right. on that train of thought. You know me, you no, no, Betty, When I'm on a train I of mean, thought, Betty, what happened? I was, talking, I was talking about Betty Windsor. Right. But when I'm on a train of thought, what happens? 
Oh, you, you, there's nothing can take you off. That. <laughs> Railroad down that train of thought. I would, if I you know. have an idea, if you have an idea, there is no turning that idea. <laughs> but if you're wrong, woe betide anybody that tries to tell you that you're yeah. wrong. We're a long way down the wrong road before today changes his mind. <laughs> it's so funny. Isn't it's that so called funny. absolute and utter stubbornness? Yeah. Great, because I know I know somebody like that. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I'm an eye on the vision. He's on this screen right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Right, so that's the Scottish Health Minister who uh, found herself... Can you imagine the conversation? I'm not a fan of their Prime Minister, if I'm honest. No. I think he's Sturgeon. I mean, named after a fish. Um, uh, but can you imagine that telephone call? No, I've had a report... From the Scottish Sun, where are you now? Um, <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine? You need to come back and apologise. Uh, oh dear! Uh, you can imagine that phone call. call. What How long you... will it take for you to get into the office? You need to be here now. Ooh, yeah. It'll take me uh, about two hours. Yeah, yeah. How long will it take me to do fifty miles? But you live on the doorstep. You live on the doorstep. That's why you can claim your expenses. Doorstep. Uh, oh, dear. So what did Betsy have to say? I missed it. So the Queen did a speech. She did indeed. And what and did she have to say? It's the first time she'd done a speech, other than Christmas, uh, in many, many, many years. It's the, five, it's the fifth time she's done a speech outside of Christmas. In, in the a 68 year reign. Yeah. Wow. And you know the first thought that came to my mind when she did that? Go on. Poor Charlie. He'd been waiting for 68 years. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry, yeah. laughs> oh, and that's what we got. Yeah. At the moment, he'd be really useful in, in that place yeah. because he's had this thing. He has had coronavirus and he's survived it and has come out the other side. Has he? I know he's had it. I didn't know he's, he's better. I thought he meant he could be really helpful by going to the palace with coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Giving it to the old guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah. Hang on a minute, guys. Is, is this, we better calm this down, guys. This is treason. This is treason. Well, that's what, I mean, this is not me thinking it. I just wondered where you were going with that, Yusuf. <laughs> And these are not my thoughts, they're somebody else's thoughts. I've said, I've said all the way through these, any views expressed by me are not yeah. mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I stick by that. I anyway, thought, I'm just re I'm I'm reading back, for the script me, that Ibra gave us. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I nicked them off the web. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did Betty have to say? I thought it was a very stirring and, you know, bringing the community together and being a figurehead. And I thought she did a fantastic job. Brilliant. I, really, I listened to it. And um, basically what she was saying is that we need to stick together, be a community, help each other. Yeah. And we'll come through the other end. And we've got all the skills from all the previous generations to get us through it. What she effectively said was stick together, yeah. act like a common community, yeah. act like uh, real people focused on the common good, yeah. Uh, it really act like it's 1939, yeah. except don't go out and shoot Germans. <laughs> In fact, don't go out. That would don't be bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Yes. I've got another um, a bone yeah, with Mr. Johnson. Yeah. Oh, yes. Last night, he got taken into hospitals. Yes, he did. Yeah, which uh, is not surprising, you know, because he's been in isolation for seven days or nine days now. Yeah. And he still has his high temperature. But if I can take you back so many, many days in the past, when advice wasn't quite as severe as the lockdowns, but advice nevertheless was wash your hands, don't shake hands, don't meet people too many in close proximity. Yeah. And what was Mr. Johnson doing? He was having a cold All of those things. every day. Yes, yeah. And then going live on television. Yes, but he was also meeting lots and lots of people, including Matt Hancock, and insisting on shaking their hands. Oh, really? Yeah. 
So God knows how many people he's passed it on to wow. in that moment, early days of, you know, the advice that was given to one set of people, i.e. the commoners, yeah. those in power were kind of carrying on blithely as if it didn't matter. because they were, like, the, like they've got some kind of immunity. Yeah. Absolutely. And so now he's in hospital. So my beef is, if you'd given this advice earlier, earlier than you did, yeah. and secondly, that we had a lockdown sooner than we did, Yes. Yeah. And the schools were closed so earlier than they, they were. Yeah. We'd be much lower down on that curve. Yeah. And the, and the hump that we're going to go through in terms of um, the stress and the pressure on the NHS would prefer, if you follow the same theory, would be lower. Yeah. So I think when Keir Starmer says there were serious mistakes made by the government in terms of their strategy for dealing with coronavirus, yeah, I think those are real questions to be asked. I wish Mr. Johnson well. I have nothing. I have no personal, um, you know, uh, negative things to say about him personally. But in terms of being in government and being a politician, I think he made a cock of it. Yes. Okay. So in, in the the human part of it, yeah, yeah we, we we wouldn't wish this upon anybody at all. No. You know, and cer- certainly as Muslims, we we care for the entire. Uh, human race. Yeah. Yes. You know, Surah al Maida, uh, chapter 5, verse 32, says this very, very clearly. Yeah. If you save a life, it's like you've saved the lives of the whole of mankind. Yes. Whereas if you take a life, it's like you've taken the lives of the whole of mankind. Yeah. So, you know, in seriousness, we have got to treat everybody with utmost respect and care for them and, and wish the best for them. So, from a personal view and an Islamic point of view, I wish uh, Boris Johnson all the best and a speedy recovery, inshallah. In terms of government, he's not fit for office. He never has been and never will be. He is, uh, uh, well, the the fact that he's a a Tory boy doesn't help as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) Doesn't doesn't help his cause. But even if he switched sides, I would not have him in government. Uh, The the man's, uh, the the man is, is simply not capable. He's not statesmanlike and he's not seasoned enough to take on the world challenges that he's got to face at the moment. Absolutely. And so, we've got like two I said more before, points. any views expressed by me are not mine. <laughs> Certainly not the views of Heritage Radio or the British Muslim Heritage Centre. <laughs> well, we've got two people who are very similar in uh, hairstyle and colouring, leading two very, very important nations in the world. Yes. yes. Yeah, and that's the worry for me. Yes. That is the worry for me because the, the advice coming from the other side of the Atlantic is yeah. disjointed, disconnected, personal, emotional, and I'll do what the hell I like rather than anybody else telling me what to do. Yeah, yes. and meanwhile, about half of New York are about to die. Absolutely. And we're gonna talk and we're gonna talk more about that after this little break. Assalamu <laughs> We're going to go to Alhamdulillah. And Assalamu alaikum. Yay. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Now, you're back with Junaid Rahim. Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And, and Ibrahim Sheikh. And just before the break, uh, we were talking about things that were happening on the other side of the pond. We were. Oh, yeah, yeah, over there. We were, we were talking about what uh, and President 45 was... Uh, okay, was, so he's, he's managed again to, to, uh, to become a world leader. <laughs> yes. No. Not for the right reasons, though, of course. No. He's leading no. the world in terms of the numbers of cases of coronavirus yes. and the number of deaths yep. as a result. They're leading the world. Yes. Yes. And if you imagine, if you remember, um, China's um, rate of um, you know, infections and sadly rate of deaths yeah. was kind of fairly you know, moving along at a. At, at a over a period of time. Yeah. Well, the American rate of infection and death have literally gone huge, very yeah. You know? And you have to ask, you know, did the Americans not know about this three months ago? Did they not do any preparations? I mean, you could ask the same question from the UK government as well. But, or the Italian government, you know? Although I understand with the Italians why they've been so badly affected because if you're Italian... If you're an Italian young man or a young woman, you know, 
you're going to be more how kind of amor, yeah? Yeah. You're going to be more amorous. And also the kissing on the cheeks and all that kind of stuff. And and as with Pakistani and Muslim families and lots of families are all, of all faiths around the world, we all live together. Yeah. Three generations, hope, in, you know, more generations if, if it can be. We all live together. We look after each other. Mm-hmm. So I can see where that's coming from, Ital- from Italy and from from Spain as well, yeah. you know? um, but I don't see why that's happening in the United States. Yeah. Well, what happened in the United States was he's ignoring the advice of all of his advisors. Yeah. So the, the their equivalent of the head of the National Health Service, they don't have a National Health Service, they don't have a health service, but their kind of, you know, medical advisor said, well, oh, I decree that everybody in the United States, from here on in, if you leave your house, must wear a mask. And everywhere, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what we need. We need, yeah, absolutely. And then it went to number 45, who went, yeah, but I'm not going to, and I don't think anybody else should, so let's make that, let's make that voluntary. What he actually also said was, uh, wear a scarf. <laughs> Did he really? Honestly, Use yeah. use a scarf round your round your face. Really, you actually told people to use a scarf, which is actually worse than no mask at all. Really? Yeah. Does it incubate it? Uh, well, the thing is, it becomes wet with your breath, and virus sticks to the wet, and yeah. then you you got it. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember when I when I uh, sanded down my ceiling, uh, you know, the first thing I reached for was a was a scarf. You know, the last thing I wanted to use was a mask. That would yeah. be ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? He said to wear a scarf. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and just today, they had their uh, briefing. They had White House at the briefing. And Dr. Fauci or Fauci, the, the head that you're talking about. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, the blonde Bob turned around and said, actually stopped him from talking and cut him dead in this conversation. So, you know, you've got your chief medical officer yep. standing next to you, trying to give you advice, and you completely and utterly cut him out dead. Wow. Humiliate him. Absolutely undermined Humiliate him, him you know, and take over the conversation, because you're such an expert in medical... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, are, we, yeah. are we lucky to have such a wonderful leader leading the so-called free world? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, to be fair, their chief medical officer didn't then go to his second home, although he might have. He might have, to be fair. Yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. dear. Dear, dear, Which then brings me back to the another subject that I wanted to get off my chest. Right. Yes. Yeah. Which is, remember last year when we were going through the Brexit kind of, uh, you know, um, shenanigans of yes. getting out of the EU? And from 19, 2016, 15, so 16, when we had the referendum yep. about Brexit, well, tell me if I'm wrong, but I thought Brexit was more to do with stopping people from coming in, the free movement of Labour into the United Kingdom. Yes, more but to from Europe... With- not from, from Europe, the world, yeah. specifically from Europe. Yeah. yeah, so it's more to do with immigration rather than to do with um, the, the, you know, it was more to do with nationalism and to try and stop immigration. I think there was an element of that, but I think an awful lot of people... A big element. Well, I think a lot of people got confused <laughs> and saw it as an immigration issue, but it was only an immigration issue from Europe. It wasn't an immigration issue from the Indian subcontinent or from the African countries or from anywhere else in the world. It was purely the free movement of, 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 uh, of people in uh, Europe. But sure. they got a bit confused I, and they didn't well, realise that other people in Europe are still white. And then they got a bit confused. <laughs> well, other people from the world were coming into the Shenzhen area, which yep. is Europe borders. And once they were in, they could come to the UK. Yeah, but that was yeah, a small element. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what I wanted to really focus on was that immigration became an issue within Brexit. Yeah, yeah. and the likes of um, the English Defence League and some of the far right kind of commentators. I was about to say, I'm, I'm sorry to leap in here, yeah. uh, Ibra. I'm sorry, sorry, but uh, it, it became about immigration. It yeah. didn't start about immigration. No. Yeah. That what happened is that the far right jumped on that bandwagon early yeah. on and really, really promoted it, made it 
So, so when I said that I was a Brexiteer and I was a, a vote leave, I got branded as an absolute racist. I'm not. No. no. I'm not. But that's how people Where perceive from me. The racist thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it, 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 it's what it turned into in the hands of the likes of Robinson. That's right. And so what I wanted to bring up was that during this coronavirus pandemic that we're going through, who are the frontline workers who are helping to protect us, who are making us better? Fantastic question. Yeah? I'll tell you who the vast majority of them are. Yes. Um, immigrants to this country. Yes. No time and, about it. And who are the people dying during this um, pandemic yeah. to protect us, yeah. to make us feel safe? Yes. Yeah? It's exactly those same people. Yeah. Do you know that five uh, key frontline workers have died? Yeah. Wow. And three of them were Muslims. Really? Yeah. All five were. Yeah, you know, they were. They were Muslims. They had. You know, they were working in this country. Some of them. I'm not going to say that they were immigrants because they might have been like myself, brought up in this country. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But it's the frontline staff who are from different faiths from different parts of the world yeah. who are here working and putting themselves at risk and their families at risk to protect us. Yeah. And I want to ask this question to Mr. Tony Robinson. What do you say now? <laughs> what do you say to that man? Come on, you tell me what you say to that man, darling. Come on, say salam alaikum. It's loud, huh? Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's better. Salam. <laughs> I heard it that time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but come on. So I want to ask Mr. Robinson, yes. then, are you going to now put a note up saying thank you to those people who, from other parts of the world, from other faiths, who are putting their lives at risk <coughs> and some of them are losing their lives yes. because the, the, they have decided that rather than bring politics into health, excuse me, <laughs> Rather than putting politics into health, yeah. we actually just work together to Absolutely. overcome this. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and very much along those lines, which is such a good point, um, in France, they had the, the they, they banned the headscarf. Uh, they certainly had an issue uh, with, with face coverings in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Now advocate that everybody that walks out the house puts what on? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, the, the, the niqab is essential yeah. wear now. <laughs> oh, so so just, to, just to clarify, Dr. Alpha Sadu, age 68. Yeah. Uh, Amjad El Haurani, mm -hmm. age 55. Adil El Tayar. And Dr. Habib Zaidi. Yeah, wow. and there was another nurse. There was another nurse which made up the fifth. There, there is a uh, there is a nurse as well. I'm just I'm just looking on the site of doctors yeah. here specifically. Yeah. They've but, given up their lives. The young nurse, she was only 35 years old. Right. She had a wow. family of three. She had three children, you know, and she's gone. And she yeah. was Muslim hijabi also, yeah. you know. And these people like Tommy Robinson, who has recently uh, spoken out against the advice that we're receiving from the government. Mm -hmm. and told people it should be okay to go out sunbathing. It should be okay to take exercise when you want it. It should be okay to go outdoors. They should open the markets. They should do this, that, and the other. What an idiot. Idiot. And we're now talking about Muslim doctors who have died. Yeah. And you asked a very important question there. What would he say about that? Well, I dare bet that he'd say that this was a good thing because he is such a putrid and vile individual who would succumb to that way of thinking. And he would have us succumb to that way of thinking if he had half a chance. He's a disgusting disgrace. He's a disgraceful human being. And I actually hesitate to use the word human being when I'm talking about him. You know, so, um, sorry, soapbox over. Soapbox <laughs> over. But, you know, the, the, we, we are facing real situations here and how real it gets is this. My son-in-law, my son-in-law, Noman Ali, son-in-law, has currently got coronavirus. Has he? Yes, he has. Oh. And he's at home. He's in a terrible state. 
Uh, of course, he's got perhaps the best medical advice you can possibly get, given that he is a, uh, a registrar cardiologist and his dad is the, the, uh, the general surgeon at Pinderfields. He's got some very, very good people around him giving him advice. Yeah. But he's in a very, very sorry state right now with a raging temperature, uh, shivers, cough, convulsions, you name it, he's getting all of these things. And it is horrible. Yeah. So yeah. when I hear and Tommy did, Robinson... Did, did he catch that at home? Uh, no, oh. he caught that front line because every time he goes into hospital... He's no longer doing the cardiology intervention that he normally does. Yeah. He is on call, front line, dealing with the people who have come into hospital yeah. with yeah. coronavirus respiratory failure. Yeah. So, you know, he's caught it from them. Yes. You know, yeah. this, this Tommy Robinson, right, because of his name and because of his colour, no man would not feature in that man's thinking. No. Mm. No. But he certainly features in mine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really it, sorry it's to hear appalling. That. It's uh, absolutely uh, appalling. Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to say I, I. I send you my prayers and best wishes Dala, to you. to to your uh, to your son-in-law and to their family. And uh, I'm just horrified to know that it's so close. It's yeah. you know it, when you know people who are going through it. Um, it's a terrible, terrible disease, and that's why it's important to flag out. To put up to notice those people who have who have complete and utter ignorance yeah. of what is it's not, it's not just going ignorance, on. It's, it's flagrant disregard. Yeah. And disdain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, do you think we should take a break? I think so. I think so. <laughs> very, very quick break. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. <laughs> <laughs> You're back with Junaid Rahim. Bahamut Yusuf Bashful and and Ibrahim Sheikh. Uh, just on our on our daily coronavirus update, just catching up to what on earth is happening uh, in this world of ours. It is extraordinary. Um, we uh, well, yeah, we, we've had a, a story from yourself, Yusuf, about it being incredibly close to home. This isn't just something that is happening; it is happening. You know. Uh, Everybody's it's happening everybody's to people that we know. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, we we had a, um, a close kind of course on um, Friday night. My father-in-law, who came in from hospital, is eighty-six years of age wow. in the high category. Yeah. Um, came home, being looked after from home by his two sons, his wife, and uh, daughter-in-law, and his temperature went over a hundred on Friday night. Wow. Early hours of Friday morning, uh, Saturday morning. Thankfully, the temperature came down. Yeah. Um, so we don't think he's got um, this coronavirus, in, uh, we pray. But it brought home, because we, my wife, daughter, and myself, we live in a, a place far away. Yeah. But actually, we couldn't, yeah, it's just so close, the thought of it being there. Yeah. And it's just a horrible place. To, to know and I, I feel your pain at the moment brother Yusuf in terms of how close it is and you know I just pray I will pray that everything is okay yeah, yeah. inshallah thank yeah. you yeah. yeah inshallah wow so guys you know um, the, the advice that we're being given yeah is very simple and the, the, you know the, 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 the queen yesterday <laughs> I have to be careful what I say. Yeah. But the Queen yesterday actually summed it up very well. Yeah. It is. We, we are in a war here. Yeah. 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 The enemy is invisible. Yeah. And it is so small that it cannot be seen with uh, usual microscopes. It needs bigger microscopes to see this thing. It's wow. Tight. So you you cannot ever know where it is or where it's coming uh, where it's coming at you from. Yes. You can never know. So uh, we don't yet know whether it's airborne. So, you know, if somebody sneezes in, in the wind, for example, yeah. it could just get all over the place. Yeah. We don't know that. It hasn't been confirmed. Yeah. So the advice that we're being given, yeah, is stay indoors. Yeah. Stay, well, not indoors, stay at home. At stay home. At home. <laughs> stay at home. Now, the advice that they were given in the last war you know, the, the Second World War was bear arms and go and fight for your country. 
Yes. And millions of people went and didn't come back. Yeah. That was the sacrifice that they made. We are being asked not to bear arms and go anywhere, but to sit at home and do Netflix to death. Absolutely. Netflix. Disney Where's the hardship? Yeah. Where exactly. is the hardship? Exactly. And yet there is no hardship. There is no hardship. There is no hardship. People are still flouting this. Apparently, they have um, barbecues set up a along the side of the River Thames. So and bad. the Metropolitan Police have just got their head in their hands going, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Yeah. And I say, well, we're being careful. No, you're not. You, you, what? No. And so it, uh, some people are just not getting it. No, it okay. beggars belief because this is such a simple thing to do. Okay, it's yeah. a bit hard. It's, there's no hardship involved. We've got yeah. food. We've got a roof the over. Hardship. It's we're surrounded by our loved ones. Yeah. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. And we're in our own homes. Yeah. You know, we're not in some kind of you know far off place. But we've got beautiful weather. Yeah. You know, fresh air. Yes. You know? But we're also in our homes in 2020. We're not in our homes in 1977. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't got three channels and a Rubik's Cube. We, we've got, <laughs> like, hey, we've got Skype, we've got Netflix, we've got the internet. You, you know, we get yeah. together on a regular basis and do this. Uh, you know, Yusuf and I, yourself, Abraham, we're on the phone, we're on WhatsApp, yeah. you know. We've got our children. I just, to help other people, the people who are really suffering are people like your son-in-law. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean? And we kind of need to help those people by yeah. just staying in. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It, 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 it just seems so simple, and yet it seems to be out of the grasp of so many people. Do you know what, do you know what, do you know what happened at the weekend, guys? Go on. Weekend, guys. Ready? I cleaned my garage. Oh, yeah. Hey, so, so did I. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So I've now got a garage that I can actually walk through from one oh. end to the other. <laughs> and what? I... My gym is is clean, it's there, it's accessible, all my gym equipment, so I can get in there and do that. I found something really cool. Go on. Go on. Some years ago, I went to Living Islam. Yes. And it was a huge uh, event, um, and it was in the Lincolnshire uh, showground. It was massive. Yeah. And they hired a big top. Thousand, 2,000 people seat, seating in this big top and they put on Islamic shows every night and yeah. speak, speakers and etc. Cetera, et cetera. It was fantastic. And then they had several marquees set up where they had lectures and, and talks and, and all sorts of stuff going on through the days as well. It was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, on. On <laughs> scooter, look at this, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Carry on, don't let that distract you. It's a wonderful story. <laughs> so... We we went for the weekend. Yeah, we went there to the uh, to the Living Islam exhibition, and we booked a little bit late. And by the yeah. time we booked, there were no hotel spaces left. Right. 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 Yeah. So they had a second option, and that was to to camp. Oh, yeah. right. And they set up their own tents, and then you could hire their tent and use it for the weekend. Daddy. We did that. Yes, now, my missus, who is a five-star missus, yeah. and anything less than that, yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, she said, yeah, okay, <laughs> and uh, we, we went and camped. Yeah. The best weekends ever. It was fantastic. 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 It bucketed down with rain every night. It was just <laughs> wonderful. Didn't get a wink's sleep, but it yes. was fantastic. Yes. Now, at the end of that exhibition, they said, we don't want to pack up all of these tents and take them with us. You can buy them. And I went, oh, I'll do that then. How much? Yes. Ten pounds. Oh, my went, oh, God. Fantastic. So yeah. I bought it. So I found that in my garage. Right. Wow. So guys, fortunate as I am, yeah, I've got a garden. Yeah. And I'm going to pitch my tent and I can be anywhere I like in my tent. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll handle it. So Pitch I'm going to do exactly that yeah. today. Brilliant. So you've got a man cave. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to my man cave, <laughs> and I may be away for some time. <laughs> brilliant! Well, that is brilliant. I did the same thing, apart from the the tent. Yeah, I decided my garage, which has a car on one side 
and the other side was just full of rubbish. So yes, literally yes. getting in around was, you know, navigation. Yeah, yeah. So I took everything out, and I hadn't realised how many bottles of shampoo, car shampoo, tea cut, yeah, yeah. WD forty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, polish, all of that stuff. So now it's organised, so I know where yeah. everything is, and yeah. I can walk in. You know? I got, I got loads and loads of those things. But that was before the days of the guys who do the hand car washes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you see, I don't do that. I, I only really? enjoy washing my cars. So I did really? a tea cut. I did a tea cut of one car. Wow. wow. And then I polished it, and now it's looking fantastic. Yeah. Cleaned yeah. it all inside. It's, it's a job that I enjoy doing. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Where's the hardship? Where's that case? You know, actually, you can do that. And still have social distance. Yeah, exactly. Extraordinary. Highly extraordinary. So all is not bad. For, for, for us who are safe and well, all is not bad. All is well. All is good, in fact. Yeah. You know, take a look at your life. Accept the blessings. Don't see all the negatives. This is a, this is a hard message, okay? But it has to be done. Yeah. Okay? I said it before. You know, mashallah, I'm fortunate in that I have a garden. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, Janaid, you do. Alhamdulillah. Ibra, I don't know because I've never been to your house, but I would expect that you do. I do, thank you. And you're most welcome to come along, both of you. So, you know, we, we've got, uh, we, we, we've all got space that we can go outside and yes. uh, enjoy. Yeah, alhamdulillah. There are many, many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in this country that do not have that luxury. Yeah. And we've got whole families living in uh, spaces where there is no outside, there is no garden. Yeah. Some of them may be fortunate enough to have a balcony. Yeah. Yeah. Where they can get some fresh air. But when you've got a family living in that space, I dare bet that, that things can get rather tense and things can get People, people can get on top of people. Yes. Yeah. However, if you go out to leave that behind, if you go out to escape from that, and then you come back inside, you stand every chance of murdering the people that you're coming back inside to. Yeah. Because if you have picked up this virus from outside and you bring it back into your home, and infect other people, and they die, then in my mind, that's murder, because you knew this could happen. Yeah. It's premeditated. You knew exactly what you were doing, and knew exactly what the consequences were. Please don't do that. Yeah. Please, please, stay in. Please, stay in. Absolutely. So and that's it. On, on a more cheerful note. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, yeah, on a more cheerful note. We're due to finish. Uh, <laughs> so, to everybody listening, stay safe. Yeah. Stay, stay well. Safe. As we keep saying, we love you too much to lose, yeah? Um, and likewise, we don't want you to, you know, God forbid, make anybody else ill. So, stay safe, stay in, stay well. Keep watching, yeah. keep listening, keep your spirits up. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad it's finished. I, I need to set off to my second home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, want to miss, you want to miss all this traffic? Oh, no, there is none. We have the time. Uh, so, with that in mind, all that's left for us to say is Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'll catch you on the other side. Yeah. Inshallah. So, we really hope you enjoyed that. For the 21 video series, everything you ever wanted to know about Islam and the Muslim culture, but couldn't be bothered to ask, click the link in the top right of the screen. Also, please subscribe by clicking the red button below if you haven't already done so. We want to reach as many people as we possibly can. Thank you once again for your support and we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.